So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to model this ANSI flange for the purpose of utilizing a design table to drive the different sizes of ANSI flanges. So in this model, if I come over to my configuration manager, I just created three sizes. I've got a 3 inch, an 8 inch, and then a 10 inch. And those are all being created by my design table. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this and show you how to do this in SOLIDWORKS. So first things, click on your new sheet of paper and double click on part, opens up a new part. First thing we need to do is model it. So we'll click on our sketch icon, open a sketch on the top plane, and I'm just going to model the three inch. So my three inch has got an inside diameter, three and a half inches, and then an outside diameter of seven and a half inches. And where I'm getting this information from is I pulled up a chart off the internet for ANSI flanges. So the one I'm working on has got a three and a half inch inside diameter, six inch diameter bolt circle, three quarter inch diameter bolt holes. There's four holes, an outside diameter of seven and a half. So we're going to do this three inch, and then we're going to do this eight inch, and we're going to do the 10 inch also. So now that I've got this sketched out, I need to extrude this to give it thickness. So I'll click on features, click on extrude boss base. I'm going to make this flange a quarter of an inch thick. Come down here to select the contours, click there. And I just want to extrude this middle part, not the whole thing. So I'll go ahead and select in that region, hit my green check mark, and I've got a start for my flange. Now I'll add a hole using the hole wizard. So I'll go ahead and click on hole wizard. Make sure I've got my hole option selected. Scroll down here a little bit. I'm going to use an ANSI inch standard. These were three quarter inch holes. So I'll scroll down here until I find the section for three quarter inch. So it's right there. I want it to be through all. Everything else there looks good. I'll click on positions. It says select the face for the hole or slot, so I'll select this top face. I'm just going to click on normal too, so I'm looking directly at it. And with hole wizard, we just place a point anywhere where we want a hole. So I'll click one time to place that point. I'll hit escape, and now I can fully define where that hole's at. So such as this origin to the point, I'll make those two points vertical. And I did that by holding down control and selecting the two points. I had escape a couple times and now I need to dimension this. So I need the same dimension from here for my diameter bolt circle. So I need this six inch dimension on there so that I can use it in my design table. So to create that, I'll just go ahead and draw a circle starting at the origin, going through that point and I'll just make it for construction. And now I can put a dimension on there, and so we'll go ahead and dimension that to be six inches. Okay. Now it's fully defined, so I can hit my green check mark. It creates that hole. Now I'm ready for my circular pattern. So I'll click on circular pattern. Automatically, the first thing that's highlighted is my feature. So since that's already highlighted, I'll just orbit around in my model a little bit select this hole I created and then I'll come back over to my property manager for my circular pattern click in that first box this is my axis so I'll just click this inside cylindrical face and it picks up the axis for that cylinder and then just make sure it's set to be four preview looks good go ahead and hit my green check mark and so there's my model so I'll go ahead and save this I'm just going to put it on my desktop I'm going to call it ANSI flange. I'll hit save. And now I want to do a little model prep to get ready to create my design table. So the first thing is I want to right click on annotations over here and select show feature dimensions. That turns my dimensions on so that I can click on them directly to insert them into my design table. Also I want to see the dimension names. So I'll click on the eyeball and the heads up toolbar come down here and click on view dimension names. Now all of these dimensions have a name. So the ones I'm gonna have in my design table, I'm gonna go ahead and name them. So such as this six inch dimension. If I click on this, just kind of drag it around a little bit and then let go, I'll get 
the properties for that dimension. So over here in the properties for primary value, I will type diameter of volt circle. So I'll type that in, hit the green check mark, and then I'll go find another one. So I'll find this seven and a half inch dimension. Again, just click it, drag it around a little bit, let go. I get the properties. This is going to be outside diameter. Let's see, another one I have is this three and a half. I'll go ahead and click on it, just drag it outside to where I can get to it, let it go. This is going to be inside diameter. So type it in, hit the green check mark. I also, here in the middle, I've got my number of holes. So again, I'll click on it, drag it around, let it go, and then type in number of bolt holes. And then I also have, from my hole wizard, I've got this uh, 0.75 di dimension, and it's already labeled through hole, so I'll go ahead and leave it the way it is. And that's everything that I need. So I've got my dimensions showing. Now what I want to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit, hold down control, and hold down my wheel on my mouse. And I want to move this flange just kind of over here in the corner. My design table is going to show up up here in this area. And that allows me to select these dimensions and input them into my design table. So now I'm ready to insert my design table. So I'll click on insert, come on down to tables, and select design table. For my design table, I just want to start from a blank table and I'll just create it as I go. So I'll select a blank, hit my green check mark, and then just give SolidWorks a second to process through. And what it's doing is it's opening Excel inside of SolidWorks. So sometimes it takes a second just to let it work. Okay, so now it's opened up. I get this box, add rows and columns, just go ahead and click OK in there. Okay, so the first time it opened up here, it's not exactly the way I want it. It, um, it opened Excel up here at the top, and so I'm just going to click somewhere here in this graphics area, and when you do that, it automatically closes the design table. It tells me no valid design table instances were found, and that's fine. So I'll come on over here to my configuration manager, click on that, I'll expand out tables, and then just right click on design table and select edit table. And now this time it's going to open it up and hopefully it'll put it in this graphics area. All right, so I've got my design table open. Now I'm going to just come down here in the corner of my design table. I'm going to click and drag this corner just to resize this design table so it doesn't take up as much of my graphics area. So I'm going to resize it something like that. So I can see my design table, I can see my flange, and now I can start working with this. Okay, and now I'm ready to start inputting these values into my design table. So I'm going to start with inside diameter. So I'm going to get directly over that text, and I'm going to click on it, and it's going to shoot it into my design table. Now the key is you're doing as you're doing this, do not just click in this graphics area. If you do that, then it's going to close your design table. So what you need to do is zoom out, hold down control and the wheel on your mouse, and just zoom and pan around. And the next one we want to find is our diameter of bolt circle. So it's over here on this side. I want to get directly over it. When I'm over it, I'm going to click on it, and it's going to shoot it into my design table. So then the next one's the diameter of bolt holes. So again, I'm just zooming out, holding down control, panning my model around until I find that 0.75 dimension, and I'm going to click on it. Next is number of bolt holes. It's here in the middle. So again, just anywhere on the text and click on it. And then the last one is outside diameter. So again, just zoom and pan around as you need to. Get over the top of that 7.5 and go ahead and click on it. And that's all of our different uh, variables that need to be changed. So now, just because of the size of my window, I'm going to go ahead and drag these column widths so that you can see all of them on here. There we go. 
Now we can see them all. So now I'm going to start renaming these. The first one, I'm going to call it my 3-inch. The next one's going to be my 8-inch. And then the last one's going to be my 10-inch. And now I can just start typing in different values. So for my 8-inch, it's going to have an inside diameter of 8.625. And I'm just going to hit Tab. My diameter of bowl circle is 11.75 and hit tab. Diameter of the holes is going to be 0.875. Hit tab. Number of holes is 8. And then the outside diameter is 13.5. And then I'm going to go do the same thing for the 10 inch. So starting off with 10.75, followed by 14.25. And then 1 inch holes, there's going to be 12 of them. And then a 16 inch outside diameter. So after you get all that updated, you just click anywhere in your graphics area, your design table will close, and SolidWorks will tell you it's now made three new configurations, the 3-inch, the 8-inch, and the 10-inch. So I hit OK. And it asks me, do I want to get rid of that first instance? Yes, that's fine. So I'll go ahead and hit OK on there. All right. So now I've got my model. Now I can double-click on my 3-inch. And so you'll see nothing changed because that's the way we modeled it. Go ahead and double click on 8 inch and it updates. Go ahead and double click on your 10 inch and it updates as well. Everything there looks good. The only thing I ever do on my models is after I'm done, I turn off my dimensions. So I'll just right click on annotations and uncheck show feature dimensions. I go to an isometric view and then I always just go back to my default. So my default one's at 3 inch. And that's all there is to working with design tables. Again, if you ever get out of your design table, you just have to go back to the configuration manager. Just find that design table, right click on it, and select edit table, and it will take you back into it. So I hope this tells you everything you need to know about design tables. Good luck working with them, and let me know if you have any problems. Thanks for listening.